Well, hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Photoshop User TV. We are brought to you by Kelby One, who bring you, wait for it, <laughs> there you have it, Photoshop do, do, do. User Magazine. There's of course our wedding issue, Lovely. covering anything and everything on weddings. Anything and everything is a pretty bold claim. It we, is. We cover no. a lot, but almost, I don't think we get everything. Almost everything, indeed. All right, I am Corey Barker, one of the Photoshop guys, and of course I am joined by the other Photoshop guy, the one, the only, Pete Collins. How are you? Thank goodness there's only one of me, because yes. I don't think the world could handle it. Indeed. Two. We cannot be more thankful. Anyway, welcome back, everyone. We are here to talk about Photoshop photography, all those cool things that make what we do so much fun. So. If you don't mind, I'm going to kick start and get things started. Run with it. In a, all right. Actually, uh, we, actually, Pete and I were just what well, we were last week in Las Vegas for WPPI. It was actually my first time at the event. Had a really great time. Really huge expo. Had a really, uh, really, really uh, nice time out there. We had a booth out there uh, for Kelby One. Had a really great time teaching people. So I really wanted to do something that I had done at the show here on the show. It was actually something pretty cool. And it's not just for weddings, but it, you know, any, any, any photos you have, you can do these kind of cool effects to it. And like you have this shot here, and this is a beautiful shot, actually, it's a stock image, of course. Um, but sometimes you just want to take it a step further and really enhance it, perhaps boost some contrast, just do different types of effects. So I want to show you a few things that I did to this shot, just to kind of make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to bring out my layers panel, and I'm just going to go ahead and make a duplicate of the background layer. Now, ordinarily, I would probably go into an HDR toning thing here, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to keep it relatively simple. But what I am going to do is change the blend mode of this to multiply. It's going to darken the image, but that's not how I'm going to finish that. I'm actually going to remove the color, or actually apply a different color cast to this by pressing Command U. And I'm going to check on Colorize and just give this kind of a warm um, yellowish tone over it. You can see on the layer right there how it's kind of, it's kind of putting this kind of cast over it and really kind of helps influence the temperature of that. Now, I don't want the layer at 100% opacity. I'm actually going to bring that down to like 75. Now, you can see the difference that's made already. Starting to get there. It's a little bit warmer. We'll boost the contrast a little bit. But I'm going to make a du another duplicate of that background layer. And a lot of this is just layer stuff. It's just layer tricks, trying different blends and different color effects just to, to achieve um, something that might be a little bit more interesting than what you had. So that new duplicate layer I put above um, my other layer here, and I'm going to change that blend mode to soft light. And that brings back a lot of the color and highlighted detail in there, but again, I don't want it at full strength. So I'm actually going to bring this one down to 50%. So in two layers, we've got something pretty interesting happening here. Now what I noticed about this shot, and when I'm doing these kind of effects, I really like to use what's in the shot, use the information that's there, especially the lighting information. So we can see that there's a pretty harsh sunlight just above this girl on the left side here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new blank layer and add a couple of light effects to really enhance this. The first thing is going to be a lens flare. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill this layer with black. So just do a regular black, normal, 100%. And then I'm going to add a simple lens flare. Just go to Filter, go to Render, and here we have lens flare right here. Now I'm just going to go ahead and use the standard 50 to 300, and the brightness, I'm just going to leave it at 100, but I am positioning this in roughly the same place that it falls on the actual image, where the light source is in the image here. It's kind of up um, just off the, the, um, the side here. So click OK. There's my flare. Now, to blend it with my layer, I just need to change the blend mode from normal to screen. Now obviously that hotspot isn't in the right place because the light source is actually outside the view here. So I'm actually going to take that entire layer and just scale it up a little bit until that main flare is out of view. Now we've got a cool little flare there. But now I'm going to add another layer and let's go and sample kind of this light yellow color that's in the image here, make it a little bit brighter. And again, on this new blank layer, I'm going to use a radial gradient. So let's just use a regular foreground, the transparent and just drag out that flare like that, and I'm going to change the blend mode to screen. And that's going to add a little bit of a, a light haze to it, almost like you'd have this atmospheric effect where there's kind of like, you know, dust or whatever in the air in the atmosphere. It's almost like a matty haze. Yes. And then finally, one more element. I'm going to add a new layer, and it's going to add a bokeh effect, or a bokeh, however you, there's, everybody's got a different way of saying it. But, um, 
<coughs> when I do the, uh, the bouquet effects that I do, I actually like doing them as a brush effect. You know, if it's not actually in the shot already, then you can actually add it after the fact. And I've got a brush here that I've already created for this effect. And let's go ahead and just change a few of the parameters here in the brush. I don't need any color information here. And there we go. There we go. So you can see all it is is just a number of different uh, brush properties applied to a simple round soft edge brush. I've got some shape dynamics with um, the, um, the pen pressure here for the size and then I've got some scattering going on. I've got a subtle texture added to it because if you look at some bokeh effects they have a subtle texture in there. And, and probably the main one is a transfer. The transfer is indeed the most important right here and that is where you've got pen pressure for both opacity and flow, and that basically it responds to how hard or soft I press on the tablet. It's not giving me uh, an even spread, but it's more varied. And then all I'm going to do now is just kind of paint very subtly in my background here and just add a little bit of a bouquet sparkle to the image. And just adds a little something to the image that wasn't there before. Just enhancing it, perhaps even adding a little fantasy effect to it. But if we go back, oh, I forgot to, one, oh, I forgot to do one more thing. Back it up. What I, um, Turn it 3D. No, no 3D. I am banning 3D from this episode. <laughs> but what I am going to do is um, I'm going to select the original background layer right here, and then we're going to go and get the sponge tool. Now up here in the options bar, I'm going to set it to saturate, and the flow will go ahead and leave it around 75. Now I'm just going to paint on the background and just go in here and really punch out that purple and green in the background there. Just really punch out the contrast of that color there. You can see how it really kind of jumps out. And that is pretty much it. So now if we really wanted to get an idea of where we started versus where we're at, if I go ahead and make a duplicate and revert this. So you, now you see what, what looked like a really great shot in the beginning. It still is, but you don't realize how you know, much better it could be once you start playing with these layers and doing some really you know, great effects to it. So you can see the clarity there, the color, and the contrast, and everything like that in just a few layers on a simple image. Now, of course, this was themed around weddings, of course, but you can certainly do it to almost any portrait image, uh, yep. especially an exterior shot like that, so. Cool. And very simple, simple thing to do, uh, <coughs> just understanding how uh, blending modes work and <coughs> how brushes work, and you're, you're pretty much there. Yeah, it's all, it's all layers, yes. Layers, blending modes, he's absolutely right. You know, once you have a handle on those and experiment with different types of layers and different ways of blending them, you can achieve a whole different, uh, different kinds of looks there. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a break, and when we come back, I'm going to have a tip for you. we got some other stuff to give away. We'll be right back here on Photoshop User TV. Better website at squarespace.com. Start your free trial today. All right, well, welcome back to Photoshop User TV. I'm Pete Collins with Corey Barker, and one of the things that we're really excited about and getting geared up for is Photoshop World in Las Vegas. And uh, we've both been there mm -hmm. as, as attendees before we ever got here, and it's yeah. one of our favorite things that we do each year. Yeah, and still to this day, I mean, it's been, you know, been an instructor for years now, both Pete and I, and still is one of, it's the big event for Photoshop and photography users, and we still have a blast doing it. And you can find out more at photoshopworld.com, as you can see right here, and go in here, it's actually, the page has been updated, which was really cool, but you can find out um, the class uh, schedule and the various instructors that are gonna be there. Hey, look, look, there we yeah, are. Yeah, just go down to the bottom. Let's go down to the bottom there, you can see and our- forget that guy in the middle, it's the two on the- <clears throat> <laughs> But um, if you've never been, it's certainly still worth checking out. It is the who's who event of Photoshop and photography users, and we are in Las Vegas on August 10th through the 13th. So be sure to go to photoshopworld.com and find out all you can. Find out um, our classes and Pete's classes and all the Photoshop guys and everybody else that's going to be there. So with that, we now go to more Photoshop. All right. So it's funny. I was having a discussion with a, a guy this week about this show, and he's like, y'all tend to do more design and graphic stuff than photography stuff. And I, I, I said to him, well, you know, we have uh, a brand new... Uh, Lightroom show with uh, RC and Scott. We have Lightroom Killer Tips. We have The Grid. We have Photography TNT. 
Uh, and if you're really doing photography more than design, you're probably wanting to be in Lightroom. Mm -hmm. That being said, there's certain things that you need to do in Photoshop that you can't do in Lightroom, or they just handle better. Photoshop is a graphics program that happens to handle photography, whereas Lightroom is a photography program. So you want to do most of your work in Lightroom for workflow reasons. It's faster, a little bit better, or whatever. Yes, Camera Raw and Lightroom are the exact same engine, so you can do it in Camera Raw. They transfer over. But when you start getting into fixing stuff, cloning and healing, and, and the extra, extra lifting that you need to do to edit your photos, you need to come into Photoshop. And so this is, this is where, uh, when I'm teaching classes on composition and stuff, this is where Photoshop really comes in handy. So here's an image that I have of these girls. I, I was doing a, a kid's portrait workshop, and this is one of the images. And it's a cute image, but here's the thing that we teach on, is that there's nothing neutral in the frame. Everything either adds to or distracts from the story. And so you always want to ask the question, what's the story? What's the subject? What's the main thing? And to be honest, the, the story and the subject are these girls and their interaction here, and especially this girl right here. So what's going to happen is anything that's on the, especially the edges and the corners, uh, can become a real distraction. And so this is where Photoshop really comes in handy. Uh, there, there are about eight or nine different things that can really pull your eye away, and two of them are the brightest things in, an, in the frame and also recognizable shapes. And so here we have a couple things that are just going to grab your attention. First of all, uh, you come in here, your eye, we kind of know how the eye is going to work. It's going to come in here, it's going to focus on her, focus <coughs> on these girls. Then it's going to look at the cow, but then it's these bright branches, this bright sky. And then back here, you kind of figure out, well, that may be an RV or something back there. So this is where Photoshop can really come in handy to help clean up your photograph. And so what I always do, my first tool of choice is always going to be the spot healing brush because it is kind of the super tool that even when it messes up, if you try it a couple times, it tends to learn. But one of the first things I do is I try to hit those bright areas if they're just extra distracting areas like this up here. I just do a quick bam just right over those bright areas and I try to work in little pockets to help it work a little bit better. And now you're going to find that even with the spot healing brush, it tends to goob up on the edges. Uh, that's where you can either take your uh, clone stamp tool or a couple other things and just come in here and, and swipe through that. Now you're back to your spot healing brush and just clean that up. But then also right along here, let's go down here. And it actually did a pretty good job of cleaning up that fence for me. Let's see how it'll act with this right here. Not too bad, but what I would now do, first of all, I'd run through with as much of the spot healing brush as I can, get, away, get rid of these distracting things, even these branches, because the way I see it, I'm not a photojournalist. I'm an artist, and I'm trying to tell a story. And so I'm using all the tools at my disposal to tell a better story. And as it is now, you don't want a stick coming out of the head of this girl. And the great thing about the spot healing brush, let me zoom in here. Let's get back over to here. Let's go down one. Let me undo that. The spot healing brush, actually, I'm not even being as careful as I would with a healing brush. It kind of goob that up, but if I go back a couple times, let's see if it'll fix it. It kind of builds that stuff back in, so I don't have to be extra careful there. I just know that the spot healing brush is going to kind of rebuild a lot of that. How about with this post right here? Let's just come in here and do something like this. Uh, a little bit goobery. Let's try to come back in a couple times. What's your word of the day is goob. Goob, yep. Okay, so sometimes it doesn't work, and this is what you got to do. You've got to figure out that sometimes you win, sometimes you lose here. So now I'm going to come back over. Uh, and what's so funny is whenever I'm not demonstrating this, that tool works to perfection. Whenever I am demonstrating it, it likes to fight me. It knows what's going on, and it likes to make a fool of me. But that's okay, because I've got family that's used to me being a fool, so it's not a big deal. All right, so the last thing I would do is right here, it did a pretty good job, but the fence is a little funky. Well, if you understand how the cloning works, I could even use the healing brush here, but I'm just going to sample this area right here, put that right in the intersection, and I'm just going to clone in that right there. Looks pretty crappy, so let's go back to the healing brush. 
The key with the healing brush is knowing how to lay down whatever you've sampled so that it blends well. If I had this off just a little bit, let me zoom in a little bit more. If let's say I had this off a little bit, what would happen is, as I'm pointing to the screen like y'all can see it, is that it would blend and blur across but, and it would smear. But if I lay it right on top of the old fence and I start dragging down, and placing this in there, it will actually <coughs> blend fairly well without giving you that smearing. And so you just kind of got to be aware of what's going on with your tools. But in just a little bit, I can swipe this down and I can rebuild the fence fairly quickly. Now the whole thing is to use these tools to shape the image. If I had more time, what I would probably do is go in there and I would even darken down the cow a little bit, just a little bit because the brightness is going to drag uh, your eye in there, but at the end of the day, here's uh, after I've done all the little retouching without doing the cow. You know, I looked at the cow afterward and said I should darken that up. But here's before and here's after. As a photographer, as an artist, you want to control what <coughs> the viewer sees. And so now, because you have Photoshop at your disposal, you can take and anything you missed or because the situation you didn't have full control you now have almost full control in Photoshop. So notice the difference. You got these things over here dragging your attention, all this stuff, but just in a few short minutes, if you're aware of how you can shape the image, you can really tone down that image, make it more simple, and make the subject more easily to under, easy to understand. So that's just my quick tip for today. Use Photoshop to really tell the story of your photography, and uh, it's just a couple simple, quick tools that can really make a difference in how your photo appears. This is not a bad photo, but this one really speaks a lot more simply and clearly and has a lot more impact to it. And so just become a great master at using your tools and tell the story. And that's what I'm sticking to today, by golly. Is there a feature in Photoshop to add more cowbell? No. All right. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I just couldn't yeah. let that go. I'm sorry. I had to throw that in at some point. All right. Thank you, Pete. That was great. That's great. Is that from the workshop you did? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic, you know. And Pete's got other kid photography things coming up in the near future. Crazy stuff. We won't mention that now. Preview. All right, but we do have another Peach Pit ebook deal this week. You can get 40% off this deal by going to peachpit.com slash kelby1 and enter the, kel the coupon code kelby1. And here it is, The Last Layer by Bonnie Pierce Lodka. Lodka. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> And hey, that's Russell Brown on the cover. Check it out. We so, love Russell. Russell's awesome. Uh, but uh, yes, there you go. You can get that book, the ebook, for 40% off. Just uh, once again, kelby1.com slash kelby1. And the coupon code is kelby1. All right. And once more, we Lest have we forget. another giveaway here on Photoshop User TV. We have another book. What do we have? Presentation, Presentation Zen Design Simple Visual Approach to Presenting in Today's World. It's a great book. If you have to give talks, you have to present stuff, this is going to really give you a great idea of how what you present mm -hmm. and the way you present can really have an impact on how it's received. So uh, check it out. Uh, how will they do that, Corey? They will do that by going to kelby1.com slash contest. Go to the menu, choose Photoshop user TV, enter your name, email, and enter a comment, question, anything you'd like to see on the show, whatever. Just by simply entering your name is enough to enter you for winning the book, but we also would love to hear your comments and know what you would like to see on the show. On the, sh on the show. On the show. On the show. <laughs> on the show. So please let us know, and we will get on that ASAP. You okay. know what's funny is, Scott was talking about this book just the other day, and I was like, man, i got to go read it. Mm -hmm. I may read this before we send it to you. It may have my fingerprints in it. I'm sorry. But I'm sure he'll scrub it yeah. nice and clean when you're ready. All right, everyone. That does indeed wrap it up again this week for Photoshop User TV. Thank you for joining us. I am Corey Barker, and I'm joined, as always, <laughs> by that guy. Sometimes wow. I join him, but he joined me today. so We're co-joined. We're co-joined somehow. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time right here. Photoshop User TV. Until next time. Bye, guys.